Book High Five, episode 443. That's right. You're listening to a podcast that's for you if you play Magic the Gathering. Whether you are hanging out on vacation playing it on your phone like somebody, mm. or you just went to your AFR pre-release, we're here for you. I'm one of your hosts, Maria. I'm another one of your hosts, Megan. And on today's show, speaking of the AFR pre-release, we're going to be talking all things AFR Limited. That's right. We've been crushing these drafts. And by crushing, I mean queuing and playing uh, <laughs> over the past couple of uh -huh, weeks uh -huh, here uh -huh, uh -huh, and uh -huh. been having a blast. And we want to share our knowledge with you, both mm -hmm. what to do, what not to do, and kind of like breaking down the various ar archetypes and stuff, kind of telling you what is possible to be done in this format. Yeah, I'm really excited. I've been having a pretty good time with this set. Yeah, I think it's uh, really, really fun. Um, core sets, like we've said a number of times on the show, are usually pretty simple and kind of run of the mill because that's the way they're designed to be. But this one mm -hmm. I feel is uh, extra fun because it's been kicked up a notch in the flavor department. Yeah, it's it's a good time. Um, and do you know what? I also never super mind like returning to a core set kind of feel. It's a nice right? like, refreshing beverage. Exactly. It's sort of like, oh, you've been having all of these like complicated, very rich tasting meals. And it's like a cool drink of water. I was going to say it's a McDonald's ice cream cone after you go to a Michelin star restaurant. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. That, that also. That's how I live my life. Uh, <laughs> Megan, uh, tell everybody where you're at right now. I'm in Colorado. Nice. Um, I literally had to plan being somewhere with an internet connection to do this episode today. <laughs> what are you doing out there? You know, hiking up some mountains. Um, I climbed my first 14er, which is an E peak over 14,000 feet. Jeez. Um, it was literally the most difficult thing I've ever done in my life. Wow. It was, it was so hard. The trail up to the peak um, starts at like 10.5 and ends at, uh, the one that we climbed was Mount Huron. Um, and ends at like this one. It's like, it's like 14,005 oh <laughs> or something like that. And so three and a half miles and we climbed 3,500 feet. So was it tough to breathe up there? <laughs> yes. You have to like, we did it towards the end of our first week because you have to get acclimated to the altitude. Yeah. And even then it is like, you can feel your lungs oh, and like geez. your muscles. Like I would say like the sensation of when they start to get tired is different. They kind of like burn a little bit more. Wow. Um, you're like in space. It's a really, it was very, very cool. It was like the view from the top is incredible. I mean, it's, you must have been able to see the entire world from up there. Yes. It's kind of, it, it's kind of unbelievable. It was amazing. It was like the most gorgeous thing I've ever seen. The most difficult thing I've ever done. <laughs> Because, like, once you get above the tree line, so, like, usually the way it goes is, like, you hike through the tree line. Yeah. And then the trees eventually peter out. The trees are like, I'm done with this. But yes, you're like, you know like, what, trees? No I'm more. gonna keep going. <laughs> yes. And then there's, like, a beautiful mountain valley, which is where it's, like, grass. It's kind of, like, hollowed out a little bit. Really nice. And then you start climbing, like, the scree fields, which are just, like, r rocks and boulders. Scree it's just scree fields please tell me that's a magic card because it sounds like it, it should sounds be. like a magic card. it absolutely sounds it's a like black it red be. land yes um it's just it's just rocks it's rocks and you're climbing up and over rocks and it's basically like climbing a flight of stairs from a mile and a half oh my god <laughs> so wow that was, yeah. that's it impressive seven hours to hike seven miles and then on the way down did you just roll the whole way <laughs> I wish that I could have. I honestly very much wish that I could have. Okay, well, because, like, next time. Go, hiking down is what makes your legs more sore because you don't use those muscles. It's yeah. like some really weird muscles. Anyways, so to give you an idea, a usual hike, we make a pace of probably like two and a half miles an hour. This was literally about a mile an hour. Wow. <laughs> but amazing. Absolutely worth it. But would only do it once a year. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> Well, speaking of the uh, most glorious view you've ever seen, what did you say the most uh, when you were at the top? Like the most unbelievable thing I've ever seen. Okay. Speaking of the most unbelievable thing you've ever seen, Patreon, uh, all of our beautiful patrons. <laughs> 
really nice, very subtle thank you. transition there. Thank that, you. Really well done. Yeah. Um, yes. Thank you so much to everyone who is a patron of the show over on patreon.com slash GLHF magic. You make the show happen. You are literally the most unbelievable thing we have ever seen. It's so true. Like, we're not kidding you. You make the show happen every single week. It's free for everybody who can't afford it. But if you can and you like what we do every week, you come here and you're like, oh, yay, my, you know, magic family's here living in my ears uh, for an hour every single week. If you feel like that, please consider becoming a patron. We would love to have you get cool benefits, including yeah. access to our sweet Discord server, a tournament next month for patrons only, etc., uh, yeah. etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, et and we are the only family that can live comfortably in your ears. That is true. Most families are very that? uncomfortable in your ears. Very uncomfortable. But we feel like a nice, um, I was going to say cotton ball, but honestly, nothing feels nice in, inside your ears. Uh, that's a yeah. physical medium. So yeah, maybe like we're like, you know, I don't want to call us the AirPods of things <laughs> you can put in your ears because that really seems like a... S- <laughs> That's a brag. That's a big brag. But. Yeah, I mean, it, it is. But, you know, maybe we're worth it. Maybe we're yeah, worth it. Yeah. Um, thank you especially to Ashley, Ways of Sorting, Scott, and Oren for becoming new patrons in the past week and to Martin for increasing Yay! their donation in the past week. Thank you so much, new patrons and increasing patrons. Welcome or a continuing welcome to our family. Continuing welcome. <laughs> Now I'm going to put out a challenge for everybody named Scott. All Scots Ooh. next week. I want to become new patrons, okay? You mean you don't want to pick Oren? <laughs> you well, don't think that we have a lot of like Oren listeners? Well, it, well it, I'm going to say this. If there is another Oren listener, you have to join the Scots. Like you just have to because That's very true. your name yeah, yeah, is yeah. unusual. And I would like to know if there's more than one of you. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. Yeah, yeah. So if you're an Oren, please join. But this is a call to Scots. Yeah, specifically. <laughs> absolutely. Yes, Scots, get over here. Big thank you as well to Card Kingdom. You can check out their website, cardkingdom.com slash GLHF. Say good luck, high five. They'll give you a free sticker or a token with your order. They're the best place to get anything for your magical life. Do you want Forgotten Realms boxes? Do you want to get some of those new sweet commander decks? Do you want singles? Do you want gear? Do you want to read articles? Card Kingdom's website has got it all for you, and we couldn't be happier to Mm -hmm. have them as a sponsor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're wonderful. They're great. They're the best sponsors that we could ask for. Yeah, and they they did some really cute uh, one-shot adventures uh, for the new set that you can go and check out on their website too with some of your favorite content creators. Uh, so check them out, cardkingdom.com slash GLHF. All right, let's get into adventures in the Forgotten Realms, Megan. Yeah, Maria, I started, pl- <laughs> I started playing it on Friday so that I would be prepared for this episode. <laughs> You know what, listeners, this is the kind of dedication you can yeah. expect from Good Luck High Five. Well, I've been playing it for two weeks, so. Yes, Friday was the first time that I've had a, like, internet a regular connection. internet connection since the set came out. So. Yeah, <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. It's it's been, a, it's been a wild ride so far because normally this set would not have been out for so long already. And last week we had our Judge Rob episode. So if you missed that, you can check that. He gives an update on all of the new rules and mechanics and tricky cards. I learned something in that episode, which I normally do. But just in case you're like, oh, I don't need to listen to that. I've been playing for a while. You probably still should because there's some weird stuff that can happen in this set. Um, but I've There's been, something you don't know about. Yes, exactly. Something you don't know about. But I've been having a blast playing this set so far. Megan, you've done a couple of drafts. How have you liked it? I've been having a great time. It's been super fun. Um, The first, I texted you about the very first deck that I drafted (laughs) that I was like, this deck is busted and it's perfect. And it was so much fun to play. Like I should just tap out now. What was the deck? (laughs) Just be like, it was blue, red dice. Oh yeah, that's right. And it was perfection. Dude, that's the number one deck I want to draft, but I haven't been able to get it. You know, it was like I I knew I knew almost nothing going into the draft. Um, I hadn't really been like I hadn't been following anybody's talk about like what's really good or what people are drafting a bunch of. Um, I barely knew the full set. Yeah. <laughs> and it just kind of like I picked up uh, I forget what I like you had like Fer- a, you had fairy tricksters, didn't you? Yes, and Faraday. Wheeled. Faraday's fire, fireball. No, um, Faraday, the actual person. Oh wow, sick! 
it wheeled. And so I, I had two of them. And I was just like, I guess this deck is open. Yeah. And then like the one that makes the little one ones. Oh, great. When you roll dice, um, the dwarf that pings people when you roll dice. Uh, I had like the pixies that let you roll two dice instead. Yes, absolutely. It was, yeah, it was it just like, I'll be honest, it kind of fell into my lap. Um, once I picked up a couple of dice things, I was like, I guess maybe I should start really looking at cards that either roll dice or like give me a benefit for rolling dice. And it came together and I had such a good time. <laughs> oh, man, that deck seems like such a blast. Uh, by the way, we're going to go through all of the archetypes uh, in a minute here after we get done with some of our general th thoughts. So we'll tell you how to build them just in case you're wondering, like, what yeah. are some of the good cards? But yeah, this this deck is like so high on my list. And every time I sit down for the draft, I'm like, OK, this time we're doing it. And this time never happens, Megan. I know, I know. I do think red seems very highly drafted oh, right now. Oh, yes, it absolutely is. That is the headline we could say for what's going on in draft on Arena and on Magic Online right now is everybody is drafting red. Yeah, Why? very popular. Because it is a common consensus that red is the best color. These red aggressive decks are just mm -hmm. really, really, <laughs> really, really drafted highly at this point, maybe overdrafted. Maybe we'll see the rise of other decks being able to combat them, being ready at least for people to try and just aggro you into oblivion. Yeah. Um, so, like, stepping back, looking big picture, yeah. does this feel like a core set to you in terms of complexity, in terms of just, like, gameplay? What's going on? So... Yes, I think it does. And um, when I sat down to play it, you know, I was super excited. All of the flavor I've talked about a million times is so, so good. And I was, I think that kind of clouded my vision. In fact, when I was sitting down to play it, I'm like, oh, this flavor is so great. Because honestly, the flavor feels like a special, a special set. <laughs> feels yeah. like a normal set, right? Because they've gone so deep on it. And core sets normally don't have flavor like period <laughs> except for like yeah. maybe a little sprinkling on top so i think it kind of tricked me and then i sat down to play it i'm like oh this is the core set <laughs> yeah 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 i will say that it does it does play like flyers are good yep exactly <laughs> which i think for me i would call the defining quality of a core set <laughs> right are flyers good it's like, a core set <laughs> so everything we say keep in mind that this is coming from a, a standpoint of this is a core set and what is good in core set draft is the yeah. basics of magic making mm -hmm. sure you have an effect on the board making sure your creatures have good stats making sure you have removal and like doing things on your turn instead of like setting up little tricksy things that'll pay off three or four turns down the road like we have been doing in recent sets with a high complexity level and like lots of really weird stuff we could do particularly in terms of magic mana being really flexible here mm -hmm. we have treasures but like on the whole this is simpler we're boiling it down good core <laughs> drafting philosophy is yep. what we are calling for yeah yeah i would say it's like are you doing something on nearly every turn yes are right? you spending all of your mana if you're the person who's going two mana spell on turn two three mana spell on turn three four mana spell on turn four five mana spell on turn five you're going to be in a really good situation. Absolutely. That's what the set wants you to do. Yes. Let's be efficient. Let's play things that have an impact. And let's just maintain, like we said, those good, uh, good drafting strategies that we have baked into our bones from our baby times starting out as <laughs> drafters. I just use a sentence baked into our bones. And <laughs> I really can't apologize enough for, for saying those words. Yeah, that's... <laughs> terrifying and kind of disgusting and i just creeped myself <laughs> as you yeah no 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 oh my no, god no. um i will say that like like past corsets um there are a few cool things that you can do right for sure it's not only basics it's not just two twos for two three threes for three um three twos for three really is more of the corset like yes <laughs> size of a creature um but there is like right I talked about the dice rolling deck and we'll talk about it more later. Like you can do that. You can go hard on venture. Yes. Um, so, and, and I feel like that has been a thing in the past. Like they've done that a little bit more with core sets where there is like, there'll be like an enchantments deck or something like yeah. that, or like an auras deck or something. And so it does, it's not just, it's not boring. No, it's not boring um, for sure. There is cool stuff that you can do. And especially if you like really throw yourself like full force into the, like what you're trying to do with your archetype, 
you can end up doing some cool stuff. Yeah. And there's archetypes specifically designed to do things that are pretty cool. And if you can mm -hmm. make your deck come together, you can do something really cool while still maintaining those good core draft philosophies. Um, and we'll talk about what those cool things are coming up in a bit because, yeah, I do like some of the stuff that they've that they've done with this. Overall, yeah. one of the questions we ask ourselves at the beginning of a new set is how fast is it? And yeah. at this point, at least in Adventures in the Forgotten Realms, the answer is quite fast. Yeah, it is definitely, especially compared to recent sets. Yes. Quite speedy. Yeah. It's a speedy, speedy, speed train. Yeah. Uh, we mentioned red being um, the consensus best color paired with black and paired with white, especially um, those decks can really smash your face in no time flat, especially in best of one. And yeah. you've if you're not drafting it, you have to be prepared for it and you have to know <laughs> what you're going to do to beat those people. So yeah. that being said, they're not overwhelmingly like. They're not unbeatable, right? No, they're not. If you have a plan, as long as you are prepared for the fact that people are going to be trying to aggro you, you can beat them. Right. Yeah. But you do, it's not a set where you can like just dirtle and do nothing until turn three. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be in trouble if the first spell that you play is on turn three most of the time here. Yeah, I would agree with that. I mean, we're not casting opportunity here, sad, sadly, Megan, but... <laughs> Oh, Maria, don't even. <laughs> That's the course that we always bring up when we're like, how fast is it? Oh, do you remember casting Opportunity being the best card in your deck? I do. Six mana draw three? Was that what it was? Draw four, Maria. Oh, okay. <laughs> instant, instant speed, uh, draw four cards. Oh, Opportunity. Oh, oh Opportunity. <laughs> Those what were a beautiful the days. card. Those were the days. <laughs> and then the other thing that kind of uh, sets this as a core set is, of course, we're playing with primarily two color decks. Yeah. However, there is uh, something neat in this set, which is that there is treasure everywhere. That's very true. Which is it's great. Tons of treasure. <laughs> so if you have a super sweet rare that you open pack three, you could you might be able to splash it depending on what yeah. you've already drafted. Like I don't think we're at the at a place right. We're not at three color deck place. I'm, like, I've never have been. Absolutely not. Um, and I think if you're splashing, it's one card, maybe two. Yeah, it's got to be worth it, right? You're not going to splash. It better be real right. good. You're not going to splash for something that's not Xanathar or whatever, because it's just not worth it. Because like Megan said, because you're just for all the reasons we said core set, like it's got to make the impact. And if you're sitting there with a dead in your hand or you don't have the mana, um, it just it's just not going to be making the impact that you put it in your deck to do. So it's just dead. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's gotta be worth hashtag. It's worth. It better be real good. So how do you feel about the main headlining mechanic from this set? Dungeons, AKA venture. I'm pro. I really, <laughs> I'm pro dungeon. <laughs> Megan's pro dungeon. You heard it here oh, first. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I also love it. I absolutely yeah. adore it. Rob made a good point on our episode. He was like, I think it's super cool, but what are they going to do in the future? Like, I love it so much that I want to see it again. And I don't know if we'll be able to see it outside of a D&D &D set, but he's like, what, yeah. do you, what are we going to do? Is it going to be three new dungeons that you'll only have access to? Because then we're mm -hmm. getting some weird rules situation problems um, yeah. because of the other dungeons. But anyway, that's how much we love it. We like. I'm like, let's put it in again. <laughs> It's, it's really cool. I like that um, it kind of feels like, right, if a person has like one venture thing, right, like an ETB venture, you're like, it's okay. Yeah. We're fine. Yeah. You get a bonus, but I'm okay with it. But as soon as they start having like a repeatable effect or you're like, you can feel it starting to snowball. Oh. You're like, uh oh, oh no, oh no, oh no. <laughs> it's Then it gets really scary really fast. Exactly. I had someone against me and sealed the other day complete dungeon of the mad mage i i, I love it i love it, it you're was, doing it it was great they were doing it that their deck was busted it was very good it was it was awesome to see work they had like the two one the yuan t two one that's a rare oh yeah in blue that if it's the only thing attacking it's unblockable nice and when it deals combat damage to you to an opponent you venture they had that and then varus <laughs> and like they played that on two and varus on three and i was like or like maybe that thing's three in Varus, then they played Varus on four. But point is, they did those two things back to back, and I was like, "Yeah." And we talked <laughs> about it when we first saw Venture. We're like, "Oh, this is a free, quote unquote. This is a free. What? Yeah. You know, um, 
saga, essentially. Yeah. If you have a repeatable dungeon situation, <laughs> that is what you want out of your venture stuff. Incidental venture is like, okay, maybe it'll help fix your next draw with your scry. Mm -hmm. Maybe you'll gain a life, make a goblin token, and then that, that'll be it for you. But yeah, which is like, yeah, that's that's okay. But what you really want to be doing is going hard on venture if that's your point and in your and you're in the colors for mm -hmm. it. Yeah, which we'll talk about more when we get into the archetypes. Yeah, I like it because I think that it works well. Right? I think that they did a really nice job making it work as both. It's nice if it's just incidental. Yeah, on a card, you're just like, Oh, yep, cool. This says venture on the like the two two for two and a blue. Um, that has flying oh, and yeah. when it ETBs you venture. Right. And it's like, great. Like I would play that card anyways. Um exactly. in a core set. It's a flyer. Like it's gonna <laughs> it's gonna do work. And then it incidentally will like get me a scry or make me a goblin token. Yes. Um, and then it also works as a mechanic that you can go all in on. Yeah. And I think that that's like a really nice sweet spot that they landed in. Yeah, I think they nailed it. Um, I, yeah, I, I really, really like it. The question I've been seeing people ask a lot at the start of this format is, well, which dungeon should I choose? Right? Yeah. Because we've got the three options. Uh, they're all pretty different. Very. And uh, I think as a general rule here that the Lost Mine of Fandelver is generally the dungeon you want to go into. I was going to say, as far as I could tell, everyone in the world has come to the consensus that Lost Mine of Fandelver is the dungeon that we're picking. Yeah. <laughs> Which is correct, because yes. you're going to be able to go through it the fastest and get to the reward draw card the soonest. Mm -hmm. That being said, you can go into the Mad Mage dungeon if you are all in on venture. Yes, exactly. And I think that that's kind of where, um, yeah, that seems like to be where people have landed. If it's incidental or like only a little bit in your deck, you're going to do Lost Mine. Yep. Because then you're probably going to get to the end of it. You'll draw a card. Great. All of the benefits on it are nice. They're sick. Yeah. Uh, but if you're all in, then like Dungeon of the Mad Mage. Like, let's do it. I mean, once yeah. I, when I've gotten to the last chapter of the chapter, see, I'm talking about like a saga. <laughs> when I've gotten to the last room of it, I've been like, all right. You know, you get to cast these uh, cards for free, which is pretty sweet. It's sick. I've also played against somebody who went into the Tomb of Annihilation, Megan. <laughs> Ooh, were they super aggro? Yes, exactly. Yeah, That's nice. what you got to do. If you're very, very like aggressive, it. you yeah. can go into the Tomb of Annihilation, but you guess what? You better be the beatdown because if you're yeah. not, you just lose. <laughs> yep. That's the same as like um, Faraday's Fireball, right? Yes. You're like, do you know what? You need to be okay losing that die roll. Yeah. <laughs> not like quote unquote losing that die roll. Yeah. Rolling a one through nine. Exactly. Like. You better be, you better be all right with it. Yeah. My opponent has killed themselves casting a Faraday's Fireball against me. And I was like, oh yes, it's beautiful. It's great. I <laughs> equally satisfying. I like, it was, it was the only thing I could do. And I was at one and I was just like, well, either we die because we don't cast it or we cast it and we see what happens. Yep, absolutely. And do you know what? I did not die. Nice. <laughs> and it was like, all right, that was... <laughs> That was sick. <laughs> you know, it's uh, let's talk about dice. How yeah. how we feel? We talk about dungeons. We love them. How are we yes. feeling about dice rolling? Yes, because this was very controversial. I think, especially amongst more established competitive players. Yes, one hundred percent. Right? Of like, why are you putting more variants in our game? Yep. But I will say that I, in my opinion, it's fine. I agree. Like most cards that have die rolling on them, it's not a huge difference. No matter what you roll. Yep. I'm thinking of like um, Jeannie Winseer. Right. Or Jin Winseer is like, right? It doesn't, you're rolling a die, but it's scry one, two, or three. Exactly. It, it does not matter. You're never going to get horribly punished uh, yeah. for rolling die with the exception of Faraday's Fireball if you're at two. Yes. <laughs> or um, treasure, treasure chest. Ch and you know what? I had treasure chest in my die rolling. Okay. Deck. What happened? I never rolled anything less than a 10 nice so i always drew three cards and gained three life yeah. and it was sick because <laughs> i also because i want to say right there there is the blue red deck which is more mechanically the die rolling deck yeah and in that deck you have barbarian class and you have pixie trickster yep which both allow you to roll two die instead of one great so right there's also like they mitigated they're like hey there is a deck that 
might end up with a little bit more variance because it's a little bit more reliant on die rolling. But if you're really into that deck, then you're going to, right? I had two pixie tricksters. I think I, I maybe only rolled one die like twice across eight matches. Oh, wait, you combined the two cards, pixie guide and Feywild wild trickster. <laughs> Whoops. Yes. Sorry. Pixie guide. Pixie guide. Pixie guide is yep. one. Yes. Pixie guide is the one that allows you to roll two. Yeah. Right. And like, because I had two of those, most of the time I was rolling two die <laughs> dice. And so it was just like, okay, great. So good. And the, yeah, that's yeah. a great point. Like they were like worried about people being like, okay, this deck might suffer a little bit from too much variance. And so they put in a fix. In exactly. Two cards. And so it makes it way, it smooths it out so much. This is my one critique of die rolling, which is that my die rolls are hidden by my card on mobile and on tablet. I, what? Maybe we I have not had that problem. Really? Really. So like when you roll the die on your phone, you can see the result. It's not hidden behind the card. Yeah. Do you have a di different phone than me? <laughs> I thought we had like had the same phone. I have an I have an iPhone 10. Okay. I don't know. Maybe yours is a the little small bigger. One? No, we have the same size. Yeah. What on earth? Yeah, I, I don't have to know, I man. have to like press the little arrow to hide the card, you know, so I can see the die under it. Huh. Because, yeah, because I would have like the pixie uh guide in my deck and I would roll two die and I could see neither of them. But you can always see the result on the card or whatever. But um yeah. I was like, I want to see my dice rolls because it's so fun. And they're also hidden yeah. on my tablet. And I was just like, what? What is this design? But that's weird yeah. if it's only me. <laughs> yeah, I have not had that issue. What the um. heck? <laughs> okay, you have to send me a screenshot Sorry. or something when it happens. Because now I'm like, I'll try. Now I'm like, is what's am I in a weird like uh, Twilight Zone where I, only yes. my phone can show the die rolls, but everyone else's phone can? It's the worst it's episode. <laughs> <laughs> everyone watching is like, but there's no stakes to this. <laughs> but she could just play on the computer. She, like exactly, it doesn't. She can still find out what the die said. Is she secretly dead? Oh, <laughs> but that would help, probably. Yeah, oh, yeah, man. no. Okay, well, okay. If you've yeah. had this issue, tweet at Jill as you have magic. So I don't feel like I've completely lost yeah. my mind. But uh, perhaps I have. Who knows? Right, um, so there's times when it's like, right, like spiked pit trap. It's like, okay, it deals five damage either way. Yeah. And maybe you make a treasure. And I've even ended up, like, in my sealed deck, I have two of them. Um, because I, it's a core set, play all the removal, play your removal. Yep. Play all of it. Just play all of it. Um, and there have been times when I've been stuck on five mana for forever and I activate, activate the spiked pit trap and I don't get a treasure and I have like my white dragon in my hand and I'm like, come uh, on. <laughs> I think it's actually, maybe it adds, you know, maybe it, okay. So maybe it increases variance slightly, but it also adds an interesting comp, you know, computation that you've got to do every time. Mm -hmm. Like what, you know, for instance, Faraday's fireball or whatever, like, is it worth it to me to get dinged for two in the face to, to do this? Yeah. Like likely the answer yeah. is yes or whatever, but yeah. it's still interesting. It absolutely is. I, I really, I like it. Yeah. I'm, so. I'm here for it. And I don't mind a little more variance in magic in this way. Yeah. Ooh. Also, we don't have, you know, we haven't talked about the class enchantments, Oh gosh. which I just want to touch on briefly yeah. because I'm in love. They're so good. I love them so much. I think that they're, they're excellent design. I love them too. Which is your favorite? Uh, wizard. Wizard class. <laughs> I said it, but I already knew the answer. What do you, what's my favorite what's one? What's my favorite one? <laughs> I love them. They give you something to do when you have nothing else to do. They're, mm -hmm. they're great bonus at every level. They give you the incidental, whatever their, you know, static ability is. I just, yeah. Uh, I'm here for that. They're great. And I, combining yeah. them is fun too, because I just like to imagine like cleric barbarian or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? Barbarians need clerics too. Yeah. You know, come on. Why not? Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm a, I'm a really big fan. Yeah. I, think, I just yeah. love them. Um, I uh, will talk about a couple of them uh, coming up for these uh, archetypes, but keep them in mind when you're drafting, because most of the time they're going to be something that you want. There's very few times. There's very few of them that actually don't matter in draft. Yeah. So, yeah, they're great. All right, Maria, speaking of archetypes, let's go. 
Let's mm-hmm. go. Number one we're going to do is your classic blue white flyers, blue white venture. Yeah, it's uh, it's the sealed pool that I have. I haven't finished it out yet, but I'm currently 3-1. Great. Just because, do you know what? If you slap a bunch of flyers on the board, it doesn't matter. I've had my opponents, like in the ones that I've won, the one that I lost was the Dungeon of the Mad Mage one that I mentioned. Yeah. Their deck was just so sick. Like <sighs> Turbo Venture. Yes, it was Turbo Venture. They played a bunch of really cool cards that worked together great. And I was like, good on you. You did it. I'm you very it. happy for you. Yeah. Um, but for the most part, I've had my opponents do like some really cool big stuff, but it's all on the ground. And I'm like, oh, well, here comes my my Jin Winseer. Yeah. Take three. <laughs> Take three. Like you're dead next turn. And then they just die. And you're like, <laughs> got it done. There it is. Blue white skies. Okay. This is the deck to draft. If you don't know what you're doing in draft, uh, it's just like the one, like you sit down, new format. What are you going to do? You haven't read any of the cards. Draft blue white flyers never fails. Hopefully it'll be open. (laughs) Exactly. There's like, there's plenty of common flyers. Um, I keep mentioning the wind seer because I think it's just like an excellent one. It's a four mana three, three. Um, It hasn't entered the battlefield scry effect. Exactly. It's like just such a classic, solid, nice flyer. Yeah, um, this was my first draft deck too. And I this was the one I got seven wins with was blue white. So yeah, mm-hmm. I second this. Um, you don't hear people talking about this a lot, um, but I do think that it's solid. I mean, we have two pieces of evidence here and very small exactly. evidence pool. It's but. just like <laughs> the most basic. And in the, in the venture realm, um, there's Displacer Beast. Yep. Which I really like. I have multiple times, like, right, if you get up to, because classic corset problem, sometimes you get to seven or eight mana and there's not a lot of, like, busted stuff you can do. Yeah. Um, But guess what? Displacer Beast, you're just like, okay, put it back in my hand. Okay, cast it again. Yeah, this is the one for four mana. You can put it back in your hand when it enters battlefield, you venture three, two for three. So, like. Great. It's, like, so easy. You're just like, okay, I have extra mana and nothing really to do. Like, put it in my hand. Play it, let's venture. Put it in my hand. Play it, let's venture. The gold uncommon here, which is the kind of signpost card for, for blue white, is Hama P- Pashar Rune Seeker. That's the two three, where room abilities of dungeons you own trigger an additional time, which isn't going to move you to the next room, but you're going to get the, sa- the same benefit twice, which is pretty cool. Um, I love decks with multiple Hama Pashars. I've done it a few times, and it's Ooh. just like, yes, give me that scry, give me that life gain, give me those treasuries, mm-hmm. whatever mm-hmm. it is. It's it just makes it really fun, and then pair with a card like veteran dungeoneer which is the three four that when it etbs you go into the dungeon which is mm-hmm. like a pretty good pretty good stats on that four drop plus you get yeah. the dungeon entering ability like thumbs up yeah i mentioned earlier i don't remember its name but the two and a blue for a two two flyer oh, yeah i love that when card. It etbs you venture into the dungeon and i think it also has uh if you co- if you've completed a dungeon at the beginning of combat on your turn a creature becomes a one one bird yes and that is an eccentric apprentice Yes. Um, yeah. Another great one, right? Absolutely. It flies so it can get in there for damage and it's going to give you an incidental dungeon bonus. I love planar ally as well, which is a three, three for five in white. Yes. That when it attacks, enter into the dungeon, you have to kill it. Mm hmm. You can't just let that thing keep, keep uh, attacking you. Like (laughs) again, again, flyer, flyer. Yeah. Like I know I keep saying it, but corset can't say it enough. Corset draft flyer set <laughs> <laughs> there's also the torch that helps you uh, venture into the dungeon too yeah um which is good especially like if you're playing the red white equipment deck or something like that but that'll mm-hmm. help you turbo dungeon if you're if you're like if you're going all in on venture yeah speaking of yeah. venture there's also white black venture yeah they were like venture so nice we did it twice uh it's gonna be in the white <laughs> black too the golden common for this is barrel of clan under hello this is our preview card um yeah. little three three for four when enters the battlefield venture into the dungeon whenever barrel win attacks return up to one creature card with mana value three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield if you've completed a dungeon sick ability yeah it's very it's very strong and Mm -hmm. this is the deck that's most associated with venture because i don't know if it technically has more ways to venture or not but this is just the one that i've seen people who are going on dungeon speed runs this is what they've been using (laughs) (laughs) um yeah it has like you mentioned precipitous drop yep which is just a real nice card it's so flexible Um, and like you just sit you're like i'll put this on here and then i'll just wait it's on layaway to kill your thing 
Exactly. And in the meantime, their thing is like probably a 1-1 one, one or an 0-1. Yeah, exactly. Like it's not doing anything anyways. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just sitting there being just a waste of space, honestly. Thanks, precipitous mm-hmm. drop. And then you're playing fun cards like Clattering Skellies, which is a 4-3. When it dies, venture into the dungeon. Great. It's going to trade with everything yeah. practically. And then you get to get your yes. venture trigger, blah, blah, blah. It's a great size. 4-3, just nice, right? Either they're going to take four, which is a big chunk of damage. Yes. Um, especially in this, where I think we, like we already talked about, kind of two and three are like really usually the allotments of damage that you're giving people. Yeah. So if you're getting in for four, like you're winning the damage race most of the time. I don't know if you all know this, but your life total magic starts at 20. (laughs) (laughs) If you didn't know that. You don't know this. uh, I'm going to mention you would, Yuan T Fying Blade as well, which is the two two yeah. for three with Death Touch. When it deals mm-hmm. combat damage to player venture, great, Ooh, great card. Right, you don't want to, you don't want to block it. No, God, it, it have Death Touch. It have Death Touch. That's like it for bad real. News. Bad news. <laughs> All right, we're gonna talk about another deck here, which <sighs> I don't know which one's my favorite, but this one is up there for me. Yeah, blue black sneak attack. <laughs> this deck so much this is one that's kind of a a little bit more hidden than the other ones um but basically the goal with this is to attack unblocked and then get some kind of benefit yes um thieves tools is a big player here this is one in a black for an equipment when it etbs you make a treasure equipped creature can't be blocked as long as its power is three or less this card's great yeah this card's great take it put Put two copies in your blue black deck, even. Yeah. I mean, because you're going to want it with cards like Soul Knife Spy, which is your 3 2. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. Mm-hmm. Very nice. You kidding me? You kidding me? I also put Zombie Ogre on this list, which is a 3 5 for 5 mana. At the beginning mm-hmm. of your end step, if a creature died this turn, venture into the dungeon. The reason I want to put say this is because it has three power, okay? This is a PSA. <laughs> it can wear these tools and it has five toughness. It's yes, never it's very dying. Funny to think of a zombie ogre trying to be a thief. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like it would be very obvious. But yeah yeah that's a good it's a great point great point you know what very comical <laughs> i just want to say that because i died to zombie ogres wearing thieves tools the other day mm-hmm. and i was like oh yeah this thing does only have three power okay that is what you that's you know maybe that's a less obvious choice to put into like this sneak attack deck yeah and then we uh, have a class card megan uh which mm-hmm. um here we go let's talk about it warlock class Black, at the beginning of your end step, if a creature died this turn, each opponent loses one life. Great. One in a black, when it becomes level two, look at the top three cards of your library, put one of them into your hand and the rest into your graveyard. Six in a black, at the beginning of your end step, each opponent loses life equal to the life they lost this turn. That nice. that level is uh, going to kill you. Yeah. It, it's going to kill you. This this is maybe my favorite class card because Ooh. it's just, it just uh, the level two is great. Be, they're all kind of doing a little bit different things because level two is letting you draw on stuff. Level one and three are kind of the same, but level three is so, so bad. <laughs> I mean, look, if you're losing, level three is not going to do anything for you. But if you're like anywhere close to like dealing them a couple of damage every turn, it becomes a clock so fast that it cannot be stopped. <laughs> yeah, it's that's pretty brutal. Yeah. And I just love the purple art on this card coming out of yeah. this, whatever this is. I don't know. It's really, it's really badass. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I just like Warlock class, especially in this sneaky deck, because you're sneaking in, they can't be blocked, so you're just going to sick some, mm-hmm. you know? Sick. With Soul Knife sick. Spy. Yeah. Um, next up is a green-white life game. Ugh. I had someone play this against me the other day, and it was very good. Yeah, it's super cool deck. It was very, very cool. Um, so the uncommon here is Trelasara Moon Dancer, green and a white, uh, whenever you gain life, put a plus one plus one counter on Trailasara Moon Dancer and Scry one. Great, a plus. Yeah. I mean, because that's you know getting the reward for doing the thing your colors want you to do. And in mm-hmm. green white, it's just chock full of ways to just gain life on top of creatures that are already good. Um, yeah, a lurking Roper is the standout for me, which is yeah. the four five for three mana. Three mana doesn't untap yeah. during your untap step, but whenever you gain life, it untaps. Um, who cares? You're gaining life almost every single turn in in this deck. So Lurking Ropers is like, oh, yeah, you want a four five for three? Here you go. Yep. Yep. Boom. It, 
giant. Megan, have you played with it, Priest of Ancient Lore yet? Yes, I love it. It's I love it. What's not to love about it? It says draw a card. <laughs> Gain a life, draw a card, two one trades with so, a red so aggressive good. deck. Yeah. I love this card. Yep. It is. But uh, there's nothing I can say about it. That's it. That's everything. It's the, because I like it so much. It's the greatest. What song. else am I going to say? I saw somebody playing four copies of this the other day <laughs> and the jealousy I felt. Yeah. Was good in, on them. intense. Yes. Intense. Uh, what a great card. And then we also have a Dawnbringer cleric, which I just like because it's so flexible. Yeah. Agreed. It's great. One in a white. Um, when it ETBs, you can gain two life, destroy an enchantment, or dis- or re- exile a card from a graveyard. Yeah. Like, destroying an enchantment is a big deal in this because we've talked about how great those class cards are. Oh, yeah. They're so good. This card it does, it slices the dices, whatever you want. Dawnbringer Cleric mm-hmm. might not look impressive, but you want it in your deck. Yep. So solid. Very into it. Red White Equipment is a very popular deck right now. Um, yeah. Headlined by Bruner Battlehammer, two red white for a five three. Each creature you control gets plus two plus zero so for each equipment attached to it. You may pay zero rather than pay the equip cost of the first equip ability you activate each turn. It's dumb. Great, great stuff. Cards great. Um, I've played with plate armor oh. for the first time. Uh, two in a white. Uh, for an artifact equipment, equipped creature gets plus three plus three and has ward one. <laughs> plus three That's plus huge. three. That's huge. That's huge. Plus three plus three. Yep. I mean, no. You think this card gives plus one plus two or something? No. Plus three plus three. And ward. I keep saying it, but it's just so much. And it costs one less to equip. It's equip cost is three for each other equipment you control, which if you're playing this deck, you have more right. equipment anyway. Yeah, it's it's just it's a it's a good card. Equipments are usually real touch and go. Yep. Um, they can be fine to bad most of the time. Yeah. Agree. This is not one of those. It is very solid. Super solid. The ward one helps protect itself, which is another reason why it's so great, because you're going to oh. force your opponents to wait an extra turn to use the removal on it or whatever. I had someone not realize that this thing gave ward oh. one. <laughs> <gasps> no! And they tried to, like, whatever, the blue, the one in a blue <sighs> tap, like, um, enchantment that keeps it tapped. They, like, oh, tried to of, cast... Ray of Frost or whatever? Yes. Yeah. They, tried to, they tried to cast it on my end step. I mean, they did cast it on my end step. <laughs> on my 4-5 flyer. Didn't do because, what they wanted it to do. <laughs> no. No, it was a 5-6 flyer Sick. because of this. And it was... It was very sad for them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sad news. The other card yeah. I listed here was Armory Veteran, just because uh, it's a classic example of a card that belongs in this deck. It's a 2-2 two, two for 2. As long as Armory Veteran is equipped, it has Menace. Boom. There you yeah. go. And there's like the 3-1 three, one for 1 in a white, that if it's equipped, it gets plus 0, plus 2. Yep, exactly. Great stuff. Yeah, just excellent cards. You can't have too many two drops in this deck. Just load them up, keep your curve low to the ground, and smash them till they're dead. Yep, gets the job done. Very strong. Here we go, Megan's favorite deck, Blue Red Dice. You mentioned Faraday. Here she is. So good, so good. Whenever you roll one or more dice, she's the 3-3, she gains flying and menace until end of turn. If any of those results was 10 or higher, draw a card. <sighs> It's so good. I picked this card in draft so many times being like, all right, here we go. We're going to do it this time. No, it never happens. As you know, Um, just as good, maybe better. Yeah. Feywild trickster. Probably better. Tuna blue for a two, two. Whenever you roll one or more dice, create a one, one blue fairy dragon creature token with flying. Excellent. They either get in for damage or they just chump block for for forever. Yeah, it's it's such in, like incidental bonus on this card um, mm-hmm. because you're going to be rolling dice anyway. You're just going to get these the swarm of one ones. It's great. It's oh, I love it so much. Um, Pixie Guide, which I mixed up the names of these two earlier, <laughs> but one in a blue for a one three. Also, just a great size. Yeah, flying. Um, if you would roll one or more dice, instead roll that many dice plus one and ignore the lowest roll. Yeah, I love it. Gives you advantage. Yeah. Um, <laughs> a plus. Yes. There's also Brazen Dwarf, which is the one three for one in a red. Uh, that yeah. when you roll a die, um, it pings your opponent. Great. I had someone just kill me with a pair of those. <laughs> they rolled it like, right, you play two of them and you roll a die yeah. every turn. Yeah. That's a that's a quick clock. That's and a real deal. You can't just have blockers for that. 
No, that doesn't exist. The blocker is your face. Does not matter. Yes, exactly. <laughs> like there's nothing to get between you and that brazen dwarf. I block with my face. Take two. Yeah. Hold on. I want to see. I want to see if I can pull up my deck real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I want to remember um, anything else. I'll send you a screenshot so we can yes, see please. it up here. Yeah. Um. I'll. You know. Maybe one day this deck will come into my greedy little hands. But uh, I really so hope far so. everybody else is like. They know. They know that it's great. Everybody want it. Everybody, Everybody wants want it. it bad. Makes sense. It's really good. I love this, right? Like, I loved uh, Arcane Investigator, which is a nice, again, like, repeatable late game effect. It's the one that for five and a blue, and you can tap it, and you roll oh, yeah. a die to draw some cards. 100%. Just nice stuff. Um, I, I know I keep talking about it, but Genie Winsier. Like, I had three copies of this. Ooh, you had a Mind Flare in here, too? Steal your steal your creature? Get a 3-3? Mm -hmm. three, three. Wow. So good. Great. Two Magic like Missiles? Said, Meteor Swarm? This deck was hot. This is a hot deck. It was it was very, very good. Wow. Um, <laughs> yeah. And like I said, Treasure Chest. Like, when you're able to roll two dice... Yeah, that's Treasure true. Chest is it's a lot better. An A plus card. It was so good. <laughs> it was so good. Awesome. Now that makes you want to draft, draft, put like treasure chest and then force this deck because that seems so um, sweet. Yeah. But you need to you need to roll two dice. But yes, you, you do. Want Otherwise, to draw. It's For that hard. much mana, you better be drawing three cards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's all I'm saying. Blue green is a ramp deck, classic blue green. Uh, it's been the yeah. terror of our lives for the past Eldraine years. Um, Gretchen <laughs> Titchwell is the a gold uncommon here, no, blue and a green for an 0-4. Uh, so it's just a little a little blocker, but you can pay four to draw a card and put a land from your hand onto the battlefield. River hoopoo. She's a river hoopoo. You're She's right. She's a little river hoopoo. Except I mean, she doesn't fly. She doesn't fly. And deal she doesn't damage. fly. Um, and she doesn't gain you life, Wait, but you do was, get to draw a card. What was Hoopoo's power? Was it was two? It a one three? Or was it a one three? Yeah, okay. I think it was a one three. Yeah, River Hoopoo, Ground Hoopoo. Oh, ground, <laughs> Gretchen Titwillow, Ground, ground Hoopoo. Hoopoo. <laughs> <laughs> I like her. I played her in a deck. She's just fun because who doesn't love just paying to draw some cards and like ramp yourself for like no good reason. Um, Sometimes I would just keep going off with uh, Gretchen Titchwell like multiple times a turn. It was very fun. I mean, you draw a card. Yeah, you draw it's a card. Nice. It's great. Yeah. And then you can play your owl bears early. Ooh, three green green trample when it ETBs draw a card. It's a four four. Yes. So, just solid. Yes. And this guy is really cute. <laughs> yeah. Very cute. <laughs> Very, very just cute. a fat little mad owl, which honestly owls always seem mad, which is part of why they're so cute because they always yeah. look so upset. They're just like Yeah. So like, angry you woke them up. Owl, why are you so mad? Owl, you're so cute. You can't be mad. You can turn your head all the way around. That's pretty cool. Why would you be mad? And the owl's just yeah. like, if you look at me for five more seconds, I will cut your head off <laughs> with my mouth. And they could. And they, they could seem like they could. And they could. Um, just like how a swan can break an arm with its beak. <laughs> like by pecking it? Yeah. Jeez. You can just like. <laughs> wow. I didn't know swan could oh, do yeah. that. One of the big payoffs in this color combo is blue dragon. Five blue blue for a five five. Yeah. Flying. Um, when it ETBs, uh, target creature and opponent gets controls get minus three minus O another one gets minus two minus O and another one gets minus one minus O yeah. until your next turn. Just great ability. Great ability. It's the most expensive dragon. That's what you're ramping to stuff like that. Mm -hmm. We have black red treasure and sacrifice. Mm, yes. Um, I also drafted this. I went five, three with it. It was super fun. This deck is, I think the number one favorite right now yeah. of people. And for good reason. Um, it was like the one that I made was, I think, just like a little too finicky, but I had a lot of like the um, the steel effect. And then I just oh, had a yeah. lot of ways to sacrifice their stuff. Great. And Let's like, go. Every time it happened, it was so great. Yeah. If you have Price of Loyalty plus a card like Sepulcher, Sepulcher Ghoul, which gets plus two plus two when you mm -hmm. sacrifice another creature, like that happened to me earlier today. And I was like, oh, yeah. that's a sweet deck. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I had like Tiger Tribe Hunter and oh, then the yeah. one in a black where 
you set like it deadly also dispute ca- or whatever. Yes, great, mm. so good. Yeah, but the uncommon here is Kalane, reclusive painter, great card, black and a red. When it ETBs, create a treasure token. Other creatures you control enter the battlefield with an additional plus one plus one counter on them for each mana from a treasure spent to cast them. It's so cool to use great. treasures this way. Yeah. I really like it. We've also got sweet cards like Skullport Merchant, which is a 1-4 for two and a black. When it enters the battlefield, make a treasure. One and a black, sack another creature or a treasure. Draw a card. Lots of abilities like this where you can sacrifice an artifact or a creature or like a treasure or a creature. And like if you're just incidentally making a bunch of treasures, so nice. Yeah, so nice. Only only two to draw a card. That's a cost Mm -hmm. we don't generally see. Um, I wanted to mention a horde robber here for one and a black. It's the one three. Whenever mm-hmm. it deals combat damage to a player, make a treasure. This card is better than it looks. It's similar fashion to the one three cleric in white where mm-hmm. like you don't want to get hit with this. Yeah, it's really <laughs> it's just so annoying. It's and so like annoying. on the uh, the other like hand of that, it's like it's pretty easy to block because there are lots of one threes in the format. But like you want to get one down because like you said, yeah, you don't want to get hit by this. You don't want to get hit. You'll get the treasure. You'll be able to cast stuff with, on your splash or do all these treasure shenanigans with Sculptor mm-hmm. Merchant or, you know, the Reclusive Painter, etc. It's so annoying. Or play a Hired Hexblade, which is the 2-2. If you paid a treasure to cast it, you draw a card, lose life. Yeah, stuff like yep. that. Or there's like the ogre that when you attack, you roll a die and you make treasures. Oh, it's so good. Ugh, I had someone, ogre, yeah. Yeah. I had someone really go off with this deck yeah. against me. And it was with like the treasure aspect of it and Kalane. And it was super cool. Yeah. And this is what we're talking about when we were like, oh, you can do cool stuff even within this core set. I think this is like yeah, number one, one example. Sure. Red green is exactly what you would think it is. <laughs> big, big smashies. Big smasheroonies. Uh, there's Targ Nar, Demon Fang Knoll, uh, red and a green for a 2 2. Whenever it attacks, if you attack with creatures with total power six or greater this combat, attacking creatures get plus one plus zero oh until end of turn. Nice. Um, two red, green, double its power and toughness until end of turn. I just love when you said Targ Nar because I thought like you messed up when you said it because it does, it sounds like somebody just had oh, it, something was in the back of my throat. <laughs> Targ Nar. Targ Nar. But no, that's, that's its name. Mm-hmm. And this is the pack tactics deck. Um, I don't actually, I've never played against anybody <laughs> playing red, green. Yeah. which is kind of weird now that I think about it, but it you, cards that want to be here are cards like Hobgoblin Captain, which is a three one with pack tactics tacked onto it. It gets first strike until the end of turn. That thing's impossible to block. Um, mm-hmm. I think just because the red cards are being split into red, white and red blacks and red blue so much more frequently that yes. red green just never happens. It's just hard because red is so popular. Yeah. So I don't know. I've, I've personally never seen this deck. Um, maybe red just has better places to be (laughs) but it exists Uh, oh i'm so sorry i just have i have another meeting (laughs) that i have to be in i'm sorry i have to wash my hair (laughs) and finally green black stuff die (laughs) oh stuff die stuff die Um, like we have skeletal swarming Three black green for an enchantment. Each skeleton you control has trample, attacks each combat of able, and gets plus X plus O, where X is the number of other skeletons you control. Love it. At the beginning of your end step, create a tapped 1-1 one, one black skeleton creature token. If a creature died this turn, create two of those tokens instead. I love this Great. card. I drafted it the other day. I splashed it, in fact, off treasures. Thanks, treasures. Um yeah. This card's insane, obviously, but he, the funniest part was my opponent had to kill it because I kept making so many skellies every turn. But Great. by killing it, it meant my my skellies didn't have to attack, so they could just stop and block now if they wanted to. Which, Great stuff. Which is a hidden bonus. <laughs> so many skellies. So many skellies. I love skellies. Uh, another creature in this deck is uh, just a solid green creature, Boulette, which is a 3-3 three, three for 4. At the end, yep. beginning of your end step, if a creature died this turn, put a plus plus one plus one counter on boulette um mm-hmm. and you're gonna be killing everything so uh, go right ahead put those counters on boulette yep. it's gonna get huge we also have grim wanderer one in a black for a five three flash cast it only if a creature died this turn yeah i've gotten uh, i've gotten flash in and profitably blocked by grim wanderer for sure Woof. um and i love the flavor text what is this called keyword um Reminder, <laughs> keyword text, I forget what they're called. Tragic backstory. Yeah, yeah great. I love it. <laughs> I want to know what the backstory is. And Sepulchre Ghoul that we mentioned goes right into this deck. Um, 
which makes it's it very sepulcher? hard to block. Se- sepulcher, right? I thought it was sepulcher, but <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce. I don't know how to pronounce anything. So. Well, there you go, sepulcher. We all learned something this this episode. Sepulcher. <laughs> let's let's look up the meaning of sepulcher. Sepulcher. Cur. It's a place. It's like a um. It's a kind monument, of like a yeah, tomb. A, yeah, a small yeah. room or monument cut in rock or built of stone in which a dead person is later buried. Thank you, dictionary.com, for specifying that the person must be dead <laughs> before they are buried. Other, otherwise, it's just a fancy bedroom. Maria. Yeah. <laughs> Well, there's a look at all the archetypes from Adventures in the Forgotten Realms draft. Some really mm-hmm. sweet stuff going on. Yeah, that was a, a bunch of them. You know what? We're getting more than our normal bang for a buck here with this mm-hmm. core set. So go out and play it. I think it's really fun. It is still a core set, so it's very straightforward generally, but it has enough added complexity that I think it just raises it above every other core set that I've personally played. And mm-hmm. I've been having such a fun time. Yeah, it's it's been a blast for sure. Let's talk about Ultra Pro, everybody. That's right. Another amazing sponsor of this show and the place to go for all of your card sleeves, Dex, Dex boxes. That's what Dex you, that's, box. the, that's the plural. Yes, Dex. is Dex box. <laughs> <laughs> Play mats, dice, Everything that you need. Yeah, I was just looking through their Twitter account where you should follow them, by the way, at uh, let's see how to t- how do you say this? Ultra Pro INTL. So international um, because they post lots of cool pictures of all their stuff mm-hmm. that they have. And they've got play mats for those new signets from that secret layer drop, which mm-hmm. are the cool old classic art by Dan Frazier. And they are so, so neat. So if you're into yeah. those signets and you're like, I don't want to buy the secret layer set for whatever reason, but you want the play Play mats. Uh, these are sick. So I yeah. think the oh, the Orzov one just looks so cool. But they've got them on play mats, of course, because Ultra Pro loves to celebrate the art of the game. Uh, one of the reasons we love them so much. Um, mm-hmm. So go check them out. They've got everything that you could possibly want with art from the new set, including the secret layers, which nobody else has got. So <laughs> thanks, Ultra yeah. Pro, for being our sponsor and for continuing continually making good good stuff. Continuing. <laughs> Continuing to make Dex box. <laughs> Uh-oh, we must be coming to the end of the episode. Well, everybody, that's this episode of Good Luck High Five. Thank you so much for listening and putting us in your ear holes again. Yeah, I am about to head back up the mountain. <laughs> the 14er? No, not that one. <laughs> Just the one where I have no internet. So I'll see you all next week. All right, Megan's um, going back up the mountain. After I've showered again. Okay, she'll shower again. Maybe, you know, you never know. <laughs> oh, I, I definitely will. <laughs> I might not. So next episode. Yeah, fair enough. There, there might be at least one of us who isn't showered. We'll find out. Um, yeah. But yeah, thank you so much, everybody, for being a supporter over on Patreon.com slash GLHF Magic. Reminder, if your name's Scott or Oren, special challenge to you to become a patron before next episode. Mm-hmm. Uh, thank you to Card Kingdom. Thank you to Ultra Pro for being our awesome sponsors. And yeah. thank you to all us, the cats and dogs and birds who do a great job broadcasting our show every week. Mm-hmm. Let us know if, like, what have what have you been having a lot of success drafting? Yes, we want to hear about it. We would Down love in the to comments. know. Please uh, re- tell us. Please reply in the comments and let us know. Uh, you can also tweet at us at GLH of Magic with your sweet deck picks. We love to see it. Yep. You can also chat in our Discord if you're a patron and post pictures of your winning deck lists or cool decks that you're building, mm-hmm. maybe in Standard 2022, because nobody's playing current Standard anymore. Um, but Standard 22 is, like, actually really sweet. Sick. <laughs> so, I'm very excited. Yeah, we should talk about that on an upcoming episode, because there's a ton of cool new decks. Um Lots of exciting stuff happening in Magic right now, and we're so Mm -hmm. happy that you're all here with us every single week to just, you know, hang out, chill, and have a good time talking about it. Yeah. All right. Till next time. Bye.